Hello, uh, welcome to AIU's webinar on the seven misconceptions of art and autism. AIU is short for art is, um, I like to let everybody fill it in because there can be many definitions of what we believe art is. Um, but uh, more specifically, art is, um, the Way to Heal is a documentary about autism and the disorder's relationship to art. Today our agenda will be, I'll tell you a little bit about myself, and then we'll define autism, or at least we'll attempt to. Lastly, we'll go over the seven misconceptions uh, as, as found in the documentary uh, during the research process. My name uh, is Derek Small. I'm the producer of The Way to Heal. I have a beautiful wife and two children, Josiah and Jonah. Uh, Jonah, the younger, is diagnosed with autism spectrum disorder. Uh, ASD is mild. Uh, we began to see the typical reversal around three years old. Yeah. During this process, I became very unsatisfied with the, the treatments available. Uh, not to say that the treatments weren't helping, I just believed uh, something was missing. Um, you know, in general, I felt that more could be done uh, and that, that, that we were missing a, a vital piece. So, you know, I began to notice my son found pleasure in the arts, such as uh, music and painting, uh, which, which then spawned the idea of investigating whether or not art held a key to development that, that uh, people or, or professionals and teachers may have been missing. Uh, I began to, to conduct research, uh, which can be found at, at the YouTube link below. Um, uh, some of this research is included in the upcoming documentary, uh, documentary <laughs> along with uh, other information um, that will be found in the documentary. Uh, you know, on my journey, I met some wonderful parents, professionals, and children. Uh, the goal with the documentary is, is to provide a proof source for art, music, and uh, drama therapy. Um, because there's a lot of benefits to the arts that 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 may potentially help during the developmental process. Uh, uh, keep in mind, though, that you know when I use the word therapy, I'm not solely basing the argument on therapy services, as uh, I've learned the benefits of engaging in art helps to support the other therapies, as applied behavioral analysis and occupational therapy. They they actually go hand in hand. And uh, I think that many parents and teachers will benefit from incorporating some art into uh, the curriculum, especially in regard to special needs children, more specifically autism. Uh, you know, one thing I do want to note here is that there was a time when my son was uh, had art classes, and I believe it was taken away. Um, you know, as I point out in, in, in the documentary. Uh, funding video that we had, you know, there was a, a lot of times where, you know, we had a, a little uh, Picasso uh, painting up our walls. Uh, not to say that, that that's the kind of behavior you're looking for, but what I'm saying is that we, we have to be able to find these triggers and, and find these things that are interesting to our children, especially for those on the spectrum. Uh, before you know, we go into the seven misconceptions, I do want to talk a little bit about what autism is. You know, according to the National Institute of Mental Health, autism is a group of developmental brain disorders collectively called autism spectrum disorder. The term spectrum refers to the wide range of symptoms, skills, and levels of impairment or disability that children with ASD can have. Uh, some children are mildly impaired by their symptoms, but others are severely disabled. Uh, types of autism include autistic disorder, which is termed classic autism. I just want to clarify that this term is very broad. However, I understand why they chose the word classic, especially when you look at other types of autism. Uh, for example, CDD, which is signified by a reversal, Asperger's syndrome, uh, a lot of social impairment. Then we have pervasive developmental disorder, which uh, may have a combination of CDD and Asperger's. And we have Rett's disorder, reversal of motor skills. You know, before any of the professionals out there get involved and in, uh, Naked these findings. They were on the National Institute of Mental Health. I do want to say that in the field, especially uh, while I've 
when conducting my research for the documentary, I did find that, especially with PDD and Rett's disorder, that a lot of times people don't consider those to fall under the autism umbrella, which is very important to note. Um, it, it, PDD may not be considered autism, and, and also uh, Rett's has been uh, known for being improperly diagnosed as autism. But they, the the point here is that you know they do share some of the similar traits of autism, um, so that's that's pretty much why I included them here. And, and additionally, you know, uh, a lot of organizations do uh, know PDD and rest disorder as falling under the autism umbrella. Uh, all that aside, the definition I found most useful in relation to what is uh, typically considered autism <laughs> came nonetheless from a parent uh, and a special needs educator. She is both. So here is uh, her uh, definition of autism. People don't understand that autism is a behavior just like anything. You change your behavior, you give them appropriate behaviors, and then, and then hopefully everything works out. The only problem is, of course, language deficit comes with it, not just behaviors. Uh, processing, delay. I have to say things numerous times. Sometimes I have to show things rather than tell. Uh, but it's it's not as it's not as odd as people think. We all do behaviors. You know, we twirl our hair, we shake our legs, we kick our fingernails. Those are all stems. So we have to teach ourselves when it's the time of you know, you're not going to go peek your nose in front of everyone. Again, that's a stem. You know, people do it. And that's why I find it's very important to an educator and as a parent, you know, my kid just has to learn the time and place to do those things. Just like your kid has to learn the time and place. Um, but the language delay presents itself where the socialization is hard. He doesn't know how to relate to the seven year olds. You know, he relates to the people that know him. Uh, even her definition. Uh, although I love it, alludes to the complexity of, uh, of the disorder. Something important to keep in mind as we go along is that we are approaching art from a, a generalistic sense, uh, referring to not only visual art, but also to drama and music. The first fallacy we'll discuss briefly is the idea that every child with autism is a safari. I find that uh, many times when I attempt to tell people that Jonah is a common response is, like Rayman, uh, the gentleman in question was considered a savant. The savants demonstrate extraordinary capabilities in areas such as math, art, and music. Uh, unfortunately, this does not occur in every case of ASD. Uh, additionally, savant capabilities are also seen in patients who have suffered brain injury. So it's not just limited to uh, persons with autism. Misconception number two is that art is only for fun. And I'll play this uh, brief video for you right now. I find that I have to do a lot of educating um, because it seems just kind of fun or messy. And so, you know, well, what are you really working on here? But when I stop and explain on how, well, when I, when I respond this way, I'm working on their initiative so that they can see that their words do have power so that they can use them. To it. So a lot of, of telling them of what looks like fun, how it actually is facilitating development. Okay, misconception number three. A lot of parents have this. And I think, although I'm inclined toward the arts, uh, at one point I also asked if, if, if you know, my kid would even like art. And I think the, the thing we have to do here is, is give art a chance before we jump and assume that art is not uh, for our children. Parents sometimes really have strong opinions that their kids don't like art. But I think sometimes, you know, an art therapist, depending on, you know, who they are, their training, their personality, have playful ways to work with, okay. you know, a variety of people and kind of understanding again what I call access points those points in okay this kid really loves looking in the mirror and singing with a microphone so how can we explore that how can we open that up misconception number four 
is that children with ASD only need OT and ABA. Now, we may get a little flat for this one, but uh, one thing I noticed about film is that everyone from parent to professional, they all noted the benefits of OT and ABA. I myself have to say I, they're extremely beneficial forms of therapy. Uh, however, a common theme amongst the art therapists is that art helps to promote areas such as language and fine motor skills, which ultimately work hand in hand with OT and ABA. Um, it's important for us to to give children uh, another form of, uh, of using their brain to open up their mind to different are some OT and ABA who approach uh, those therapies from a creative standpoint. Uh, one of the people we um, had in our documentary, Maria Lamont of uh, the Music Academy uh, for Special Learners, she incorporates OT and ABA into the way she teaches the piano, which is very interesting and uh, will be shared through the documentary. Misconception number five is that children with autism don't speak. Uh, you know, generally, yes, uh, there is a delay, and there may be some children who ultimately uh, never uh, or, or have very limited development of, of speech. But this is not uh, it's not it's not as common. I believe most most children with autism have some form of speech uh, or some form of communication. Uh, I'm not saying that it maybe some children don't speak, but uh, the misconception is that all children with autism don't speak. That's that's not true. Misconception number six is that very few people have autism. Uh, and the numbers on the screen should show that. You know, this is just not, not true. One in 54 boys have autism. Um, you know, um, one in 88 children have autism. So these numbers, and these numbers are on the rise. You, uh, you can find out more from the CDC's website. I'll provide the uh, link below. Misconception number seven. And one that goes hand in hand with the documentary is that since art has very few proof sources, there is no benefit to children with ASD. And I do not think I could put it as eloquently as Jenna Gabriel, so uh, I'll play her her answer to this question. Now, I, I recognize that at a certain point, I have a responsibility knowing the impact of what we do to take a step back and really evaluate the academic aims that I know are there. Um, we've had parents say to us that kids get so excited about knowing their lines that it helps with their reading. Know that they're more willing to spend time reading our scripts that they've helped to write than they are their ELA homework. That's exciting for me. Um, a kid who has confidence, a kid who, who wants to spend the time learning their lines and learning how to articulate them, those are things that support their work with their speech and language pathologists. Um, a kid who, who wants to be able to do their dance and express themselves and be in control of their body, that helps their occupational therapist. I mean, the social skills that they're developing are helping all of the social interventions that they have in their therapies. It's, it has been proven that really before you enter kindergarten, there are certain social and communication group work skills that you need to have. The arts support that. Our kids end up kind of bypassing it because the education system focuses on the other goals that are there and their reading ability and their math ability and their adaptive behavior. But the arts supports that work by supporting social and communication. Um, you know, by supporting flexible thinking and spontaneous problem solving, we're giving these kids stronger adaptive behavior. You know, at some point, the responsibility will fall on us as arts educators to substantiate that a little bit stronger. Um, but as a teacher, the intangibles are, are what measure success for me. Okay, let's recap. Uh, the seven misconceptions are Savon. Art is only for fun. Art therapy is not a fit for my child. OT and ABA are the only tools available. Children with ASD don't speak. Very few children are diagnosed ASD. And art is not substantiated, therefore not beneficial to children with ASD. This is our first webinar. Uh, 
follow us on Facebook and Twitter as we will announce the, the schedule start date of our webinar series, which will feature interviews from professionals and parents. Send me an email using the form below if you want to join our mailing list. Uh, please also feel free to post your comments below with uh, any recommendations or suggestions you may have. Uh, references uh, will also be posted shortly. The photos and video are courtesy of DS Artistry Productions, uh, which is the parent company of Art Is Um. Uh, thank you for joining us, and I uh, hope you enjoyed the webinar. And you know, please follow us so that you can be updated as to the start of the uh, when the documentary will actually air. Thank you. Oh, oh well, before, before I go, you know, I'll stay on uh, for a couple more minutes if anyone has any questions or concerns, uh, and I'll uh, attempt to answer them. Uh, as best as possible. Okay, well, there are no questions. Thank you, and uh, have a nice day. Please come back soon. Bye-bye. <laughs>